Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're talking about getting plants ready for winter. Now to be perfectly honest, there's not a lot you need to do, but there's thing, things that I've not seen mentioned elsewhere that I think are quite important, especially if you live somewhere that's quite cold. I... I'm, I'm not caffeinated yet. Um, I've got an electrician coming around this afternoon and I wanted to get a load of stuff fitted in and none of it that important but I'm like right I need to take my walk which I can go a day without a walk but I need my little walk so I've had to push my coffee and reading my Feedly feed which is normally the first thing I do to the end of the queue and uh, yeah it's it's actually quite strange being uncaffeinated it's just something I take for granted and now here we are so if I'm a bit low energy it's because I'm low energy so yeah, getting plants ready for winter. But we are excited to get our oven fixed. It's been months. Uh, we've been making do with an air fryer and uh, the other month I bought a little single hob from Amazon, like a little camping one. So it's fine, but it'd be so exciting to get an oven. Anyway, getting plants ready for winter. So where I am now, I can currently see outside plants that really should be in by now. So if you could have plants outside, over the summer now is really time to be bringing them in obviously it depends where you live how cold it gets if you're in the southern hemisphere you have the totally opposite problem you should be taking your plants out but um you want to be bringing them in before there's any chance that it could be frost some plants will do okay with the mild frost like succulents and stuff will probably be okay and like there's no guarantees here but realistically they'll be fine but remember it gets a lot colder on a night than you might think so yeah you should really be bringing them in i'm looking at mine and because the, the electrician may have to like pull up my floorboards and stuff i have to move all my plants anyway so there's no way that they're going to be there's going to be any room for these ones so these shelves are going to have to be moved which is an absolute nightmare uh but i want my oven back so they're gonna have to stay out there a bit longer i'm sure she'll be all right a lot of people sort of panic about bringing plants in for the winter, about pests and stuff. In my experience, putting plants outside is quite a good way of getting rid of pests because there's so many predators out there. I mean, if I've got like a couple of raised beds and one of them had, it's got um, cucumber plants in and they are covered in ladybirds, absolutely covered. So whilst, yeah, there's pests outside, the pests have predators, whereas there's very few predators in your house. Uh, well, I suppose this time of year it's full of spiders, isn't it? Probably now is a great time to bring them in. So don't panic too much about that. I don't think there's that much danger of bringing like a load of pests in. So, I mean, give them a good hose down if you want. I probably won't because it's lazy. But yeah, don't panic about that. I'll be fine. Second thing, which is also to do with moving plants, is I highly recommend moving most plants out of your bathroom bathrooms in general are really cold they've not got any soft furnishings and they they're well ventilated we have our bathroom window open all the time just so we don't get any like mildew growing so <laughs> is my voice really like deep and this is the lack of coffee and the fact i've just woken up i am excited to have all my tasks finished early though and then i can have my coffee that's quite exciting i mean i'm, I'm not going to change doing that every day but uh mm. god my life's exciting where were we Oh yeah, so yeah, plants in the bathroom in winter isn't a great idea yet. They can just get too cold and it's damp and it's just a great way to get like rot and mould and stuff building up. Mould on house plant soil isn't that big of a deal, but you don't want like fungal infections and stuff like that. And if it's cold, the plant will be in a weakened state anyway. So I would just move them. There are plants that I do keep in my bathroom over winter, but I do keep an eye on them. And if they show, if there's any signs that they're looking a bit sad, and move them. Uh, this year I'm going to keep my ZZ plant in there. To be honest my ZZ plant like I'm starting to doubt it's even a real plant. It doesn't seem to care about anything and this year it hasn't grown at all. Uh, I don't really know why. It's not root bound. It just seems to have stopped growing but because it's not deteriorating I'm not that fussed. I mean it's quite a big plant and I can't have it getting really really big so we're just going to leave it there. I've propagated it. <laughs> the actual like the plant part that I propagated has completely died off, but the roots are doing really well, so um, I think it'll probably be okay. Um, maidenhair ferns, so ferns in general can tolerate 
slightly colder temperatures depending on the type of fern they may come from somewhere that is a more temperate climate anyway so it really really depends just keep an eye on it if it starts looking really sad and we know ferns tell you quite quickly that they're um sad just move it but they may even grow happily all year round in like a cold environment you're not going to get frost in your bathroom so it's not going to be that cold if it is that cold then definitely move it if you need to put plants in your bathroom because you don't have room to put them anywhere else go for ferns and plants that aren't that sort of your stronger plants that you don't have to baby and just keep a close eye on them even the monstera might be okay they can tolerate like slightly colder temperatures i think purely because they're so like they've been commercially produced for so long i think they're just a little bit more they've been bred to be more tolerant but don't be shoving like your really rare philodendrons and stuff in your bathroom over winter it's just not it's not worth it and then the third thing we need to consider about moving plants for winter is moving for optimal light the light does change in winter it's actually slightly better in this room for me just because of the angle of like where the window is of the house the sun comes straight in as opposed to when it's higher in the sky it doesn't really hit it that well but you don't get the sun for as long so what I tend to do is I have my grow lights on I put them on when I get up I turn them off when I go out to work and then I turn them on again in the evening so they're probably on for about four hours a day and a lot of people recommend that you keep them on for eight hours a day or 12 hours a day but because they get light for some of the day I, just don't, I think it's a bit of a waste of energy these are LED lights anyway, so they don't use a lot of energy. But um, the sun's free for now. So, yeah, the, the, you don't have to have them on continuously. Uh, what I used to do was just treat them like, when they were downstairs, I just used to treat them like a lamp. So if I was sat there, I'd turn them on so I could, like, see. And they would get enough light that way. My plants grew really well, so... Um, yeah, don't think you have to... If you can't afford to keep your grow lights on all the time or you don't want to... I'm a bit funny about leaving electrics on when I'm out. So um, we once went for a walk and my boyfriend was like, I'll put the oven on, we'll have, Jack we'll have Jacket Potatoes tea and I'll put them on now. And then when we get back from the walk that we done, and I was like, there is absolutely no way in hell I trust my oven to not set my house on fire whilst we're out. It's just not worth it. So if you're like that and, you, and you're worried about leaving your grow lights on, just turn them off. It's fine. You just even if you want them on eight hours a day, four hours in the morning and four hours, stick them on a timer, uh, four hours in the evening, you'll be fine. Of course, there's thrips on my Edmontonii. Why would there not be? I don't mind thrips on my Edmontonii. Like you can just pick them off, and it tends to be okay. So does this actually? Uh, whereas all other alocasia, because you hate having thrips on, you can't get rid of them. Another thing I like to get done before winter is pick a day when you've not got a lot on and go through all your plants and find the ones that have pests on them. I used to recommend like isolating them, putting them all together, but I did that the other week. I had a lot of, um, so I had a thrips on my anthurium and a few of my calatheas, and so I shoved them all in a corner of my kitchen away from everywhere else. And the thrips have gone mad. I think there's just so many of them. The, it, like it's, I have to spend like, it's not long but like I have to take like five minutes every day to check for the throats and get rid of them all so yeah just be aware of that <laughs> I mean it makes sense if you put them all together they're like yay not that you need your yeah, thrips can breed by themselves little bastards I just like to have a, a, an idea of which plants have pests before because in winter like it depends on where you live but because there's less light they tend to be it's just like, a little bit weaker and they're not growing as much, so they're just, yeah, they're just weaker and they can't fight pests off as well. So I like to know which ones might be suffering. And it's not always great, like, for your mental health because you check all your plants and you're like, shit, half of them have got bugs, but we're better off knowing. Get yourself some neem oil. I know a lot of people, like, I've seen a lot of people on Instagram saying neem oil doesn't do anything. I think it does but then I like use just water to wash my plants and that seems to work pretty well for for pests so um yeah I tried I was trying hydrogen peroxide for getting rid of pests and it's one of those things I found either works or doesn't and there's no like like it has no effect on the thrips at all they were not bothered 
But sometimes I've done like a hydrogen peroxide, like I washed the roots and sprayed the plants down and that's it, pests are gone. So if anybody like has any explanation or has experienced the same thing, I don't know if I've just got a dud hydrogen peroxide. But um, yeah, weird. What are we worth doing for the price of hydrogen peroxide? My boyfriend has it in any way for something aquatic planty. So yeah, interesting. But yeah, you can, you can, I know in America people swear by the, some sort of dead bug. It's a, what's it called? Systemic. <laughs> it's a systemic thing. You can get mosquito bits. I think they're a bit similar as well. You put them in the soil. You like water them into the soil and then it kills you pests. That kind of thing is quite difficult to get hold of in the UK. I, I have got systemic granules. They did not nothing, but my hopes were high. What I want is a one-time application um, and everything's gone, but I, that doesn't exist. Like these, the pests don't want to die, they want to thrive, so they will adapt. If you find a plant with lots of thrips and they freak you out and you don't want to sit and pick them off, what you can get is a lint roller. I use it on my anthuriums just because the anthurium leaves are really flat. So it just works really well, just And that means you're not accidentally just if they're dropping onto the floor, they'll just come back onto your plant. You sort of have them contained. After you've checked for pests, it is a great idea to get all your plants cleaned down, get them all dust free, because some some pests, um, especially spider mites, love dust. They, I don't know if they associate it with the sign of a neglected plant, they just like it and you may end up with spider mites if you have dusty plants. It's my theory as to why crotons have spider mites like all the time. They are such dusty plants. I don't know why some plants are dustier and some aren't. I'm choosing to believe it's something to do with the ions on the surface of the leaves, but it's probably just where they are and a bit of chance. But yeah, clean all your plants off. It You can do it however you like. Uh, I'm a big fan of shoving them all in the bath and showering them down. But you can also just go around with a cloth if you put an evening aside, move all your plants into one room, grab yourself a glass of wine and a cloth. The, the wine's for drinking, we don't, you don't wash your plants with the wine. You know, it's a fairly chill way to spend an evening cleaning all your plants down. And it will, once you've sat and spent a couple of hours cleaning all your plants, next time you buy a plant, you will be looking for plants that are easy to clean. I think that's why these things are so popular because they've got big round leaves which you can just dust. Um, and it's also why my Hoya are always so dusty because cleaning, there's something about cleaning Hoya. The dust like clings to them and they've got small leaves, so. I clean my plant leaves with neem oil. I just put a bit in a bottle, add warm water to make sure that the um, oil emulsifies, shake it up and spread them down and then wipe the leaves down. Neem oil uh, has a, it doesn't kill on contact as far as I'm aware. I'm sure if you hit a pest right it would kill it but it's not like uh, rubbing alcohol which will kill them stone dead but it affects their hormones so they can't breathe they forget to eat and they stop bre breeding and that's how neem oil works which is probably why people think it doesn't work because it it's not an instant thing it will take a while and you will need to keep reapplying on like the different generations but it's a great as I say a great preventative thing to do and it's a really good thing to do just before winter just to make sure that there aren't any hidden pests to there. Last thing we need to do is evaluate your watering and fertilising schedule. I don't have one and not a lot changes in winter other than I water less. Some plants don't water at all in winter, my succulents and stuff just don't bother unless they look really sad. Ponytail palm probably not, although I have actually learnt now when my ponytail palm needs watering. Basically like the cordex goes really soft. But it, the problem with that is that it will also go soft if it's rotten and from overwatering. So you need to sort of your ponytail palm is your ponytail palm will only need watering like monthly if that. So if you're watering more often than that and it's soft, there's a chance it could be rot. I know it's not easy. Like plants do not make it easy to work out whether you're overwatering or underwatering. It's just something you need to learn through trial and error on your own. And sort of, I've heard people say they're definitely not overwatering because they're only watering once a week. But that. You're only definitely not overwatering if you're only watering like once a month. Once a week could definitely be overwatering, depending on your soil. That is besides the point. So when I say like evaluating the fertilising of your plants, I don't mean stop fertilising plants in winter because some plants are happy to be fertilised all year round. And if they're growing, 
keep fertilizing them because they're still they're not that badly affected by the lower light levels and the cold they may not even know that it's winter some plants seem to know that it's winter and others don't uh, so just fertilize them if they look like they need it and don't fertilize them if they don't if you're worried if you don't know because again it's difficult to tell if plants need fertilizing things like yellow leaves have a multiple um have multiple causes you can just stop fertilizing them i mean not fertilizing your plants for like five months over winter won't kill them or you could top dress the soil with worm castings because that would add nutrition into the soil but it wouldn't you wouldn't be risking like uh, over fertilization <laughs> no you wouldn't risk over fertilizing but also my eyes are so tired because I haven't had coffee yet. <laughs> I don't drink a lot of coffee. Uh, I can't drink it past, I certainly couldn't pa drink it past noon because I wouldn't sleep because I'm 35 now. But I think it's just my, my routine, not necessarily the actual coffee because sometimes I'll have like um, just hot water or herbal tea or something. But it's that little time to myself on the morning that I've not quite had yet. But I am really looking forward to it, which is, <laughs> which is quite sad. Yeah, so you can just top dress with worm castings and the plants will be fine until they start growing again in spring. Some people repot for winter. I don't because they don't tend to grow fast enough for them to get any worse than they are now. So if I had a plant that was like super root bound, I would repot it. But if it's just a bit, you know, rooty, I'd just leave it because it's not going to get much worse. And if it does get much worse, then it's growing enough that repotting it in winter wouldn't bother it. So the same rules apply with fertilizing. If it looks like it's still growing, then repot it. It'll probably recover just fine. But if it's sort of slowed down a bit, I hesitate to use the word dormant because not many plants actually go dormant fully. They just slow down a bit. There's two types of dormancy in plants. One is there's basically like plants that go dormant as a matter of course. So the plants that I have in my garden, a lot of like the wildflowers and stuff, like bulb plants, they grow, they die back into the soil and then they come back the next year. They, they go dormant. Other plants go dormant when the conditions that they're in aren't quite what they're after. So you'll get this in alocasia. In winter, they just drop all their leaves because they're like, I cannot deal with this. It's too cold. I hate it. There's not enough light. I'm sad. I'm in alocasia. Like, I shouldn't be living here. I should be somewhere like buggy and warm and bright. But I'm not. I'm in a house in North Yorkshire and I hate it. So they drop all the leaves. And it varies. Like, we don't look like anything's... I don't think this bad boy is going to do anything. I think she's... Uh, yeah. She's just going to continue living her life. And she might not grow as much in winter. But I don't think she'll die back to just leaves. And obviously, I've just jinxed it. Whereas my alocasia stingray, it gets to normally about the start of September. And she's like, no more cannot do it anymore and then it gets to May and she's like oh, maybe I'll grow so I don't have many good months with my alocasia stingray but this like I think that's just that specific plant not all alocasia stingray just that one she's just a little bit of a drama queen which is fine so um yeah don't worry if your plants drop all the leaves but still make sure it's the only thing is it's a nightmare to work out when they need watering you can try a moisture meter if you've got like shop bought dense soil moisture meters work quite well if you've got homemade soil that's area they are pretty useless uh, but just stick your finger in the soil if it's damp don't water them if it's dry water them don't panic about winter care it gets pretty cold and dark here i don't have a very bright house and my plants they don't do like amazingly <laughs> they don't most of them don't grow but I was like, what's that noise? I think it's next door's washing machine. That's okay. Uh, but I, I don't think I've ever lost one just to winter. I've lost them because they got bugs and stuff in winter, but that's because I don't keep close, a close enough eye on them. In winter, you need to be looking at your plants as often, if not more often than you would in summer. But just accept that whilst you're looking at them all the time, 90% of the time, they won't need anything from you. But when they do need something, they might need it quite quickly so if you find if you find like a thrips in summer you're like oh god a thrips you know treat the plant in winter you need to be like on it straight away you could like and really keep an eye on it as opposed to just treating it once and hoping it goes away in summer they have the energy to deal with it themselves uh or you can shove it outside and let ladybirds eat it 
but in winter a a small problem in summer could be a big problem in winter is what i'm saying but again my plants made it and i'm very neglectful as a plant caregiver so if my plants made it yours probably will do and on that was it a happy note you know what i mean <laughs> it's positive for you not for my, my plants are all sat there like jesus christ uh yeah that's all i have for this week i uh, will see you next week and if we could all cross our fingers that next this time next week i'll have my oven fixed uh, at this point now i don't think it'll ever be fixed i'm sort of just planning my life to never have an oven again uh and my mum's like you need to get on with your landlady right my landlady is lovely and the hilarious thing about this is her oven is also broken the issue we've, we're having is with the actual electrician who is the loveliest man in the world and he's very good but he just appears to he's only good when he's there like in the actually getting him out it's uh yeah we've so we've changed electricians and today's the, the first day for the new guys but luckily like we ha i know exactly what's wrong they just need to fix it so um i don't know why i'm telling everybody in the world my oven woes I mean my landlady's oven woes. But um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.